Welcome. What, I wonder, are you afraid of? Spiders? Mice? The dark? More seriously, many in our current situation are understandably fearful for their own health and their lives and those of loved ones. Turn with me to Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his sacred tent I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, God my Saviour. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not hand me over to the desire of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me, spouting malicious accusations. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. David knew plenty about frightening situations. Yes, he was king. He was the most powerful person in Israel for 40 years. But before that, he had years when the previous king, Saul, was pursuing him and trying to eliminate him as a threat to his throne. And during his kingship, he had another frightening phase when one of his sons attempted a coup and David had to flee while that was sorted out. Through those times he learned not to be ruled by fear, but to trust in the Lord. Earlier in the week we looked at Psalm 23 and how the Christian can say, even when faced by death, I will not fear. What David gives us in Psalm 27 adds to that. Let's look at some of the phrases he uses. The Lord is my light and my salvation. He's a personal God, not just interested in us collectively, but individually. He cares for each one of us. You matter to him. You're precious to him. Light is often used in the Bible as a symbol for God and for goodness. Jesus talked of himself and his followers as the light of the world. Light banishes darkness as Jesus defeated Satan, evil and death. Light shows the way to go as Jesus guides and directs us. He's our salvation because he rescues us. He rescues us from guilt, condemnation and punishment. He works in us to restore the image of God in us and make us into the people we were created to be. And he will bring us through death to eternal life with him if we put our trust in him. He also says the Lord is the stronghold of my life. Stronghold has two meanings, a place that is strongly defended against attack and a place where a particular belief or activity holds sway. For David, both of these are true of the Lord. The Lord protects and defends him against his enemies. He's the safe place to be. And David's trust in the Lord is at the centre of his life. Both can be true of us too. The Lord is our defender and core to our beliefs and values. David faces physical enemies, but despite their numbers and their weaponry and skills, he trusts that God is more powerful. Our greatest enemies are spiritual, and Jesus has defeated them through the cross and resurrection. Because of his trust in the Lord, David looks to the future with confidence and hope. He 
he looks towards dwelling in the Lord's presence in complete safety from his enemies. If we place our trust in Jesus, we're completely secure in this too. Our future is with him and nothing can take that away. But at the end of the psalm, David turns his focus from the future back to the earthly realm. In verse 13, he says, I will remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. It is not all about eternity. David is confident that he'll experience God's goodness here in this world. So can we be. Let's keep our focus on him and look out for what he's doing today too. Fear is consuming and destructive. And there will always in this life be reasons to be afraid. But God is bigger than them all. We thought yesterday about putting our trust in God. If we do so, he'll help us to banish our fears as we walk with him each day. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are bigger and more powerful than anything we face. We thank you that your protective hand is over most of all the things that are eternal. We thank you that we can trust you completely for our future. But we thank you too that we can see you at work and know you with us here today. So Lord, we pray that you would banish our fears and help us to look beyond the mountains that we face to you. Amen.